Chapter 4 is about analysing the resources and capabilities of an individual organisation. It changes the focus from the outside environment to the inside. It focuses on those resources particularly that deliver competitive advantage. Again for Chapter 4, there are additional features on the book's open access website, and these are outlined in Chapter 4 itself. Chapter 4 explains why it's essential to analyse resources and capabilities, particularly those that are crucial to adding value in the organisation and those that give competitive advantages to the organisation. Often these two areas are interlinked. Higher value added is often associated with high competitive advantage. Importantly, this chapter focuses on the individual company or public sector organisation. This is quite different from Chapter 3, which looked at the industry as a whole. The chapter begins by looking at value added and then follows this with competitive advantage. In resource analysis, it's important to begin by analysing the complete range of resources and capabilities of the organisation. We can identify three main areas. Tangible resources, intangible resources and organisational capability. For example, in the Chapter 4 case on Gucci and Louis Vuitton, the tangible resources of any such company include the physical premises of the fashion company. Intangible resources take in the valuable brand names associated with the fashion company, such as the name Gucci itself. Organisational capability will cover the key senior managers and other organisers in the company and the skills and techniques that they possess. For example, the skills of designing new fashion garments and organising successful fashion shows. Organisational capability is sometimes the most difficult to analyse, but can be crucial to adding value and competitive advantage. Essentially, all these resources add value to the organisation. They do this by taking the inputs from suppliers and transforming them into finished goods and services. Value added is the difference between the market value of the outputs of an organisation and the costs of its inputs. It's possible to calculate this accurately for an overall company, but very difficult to do this for individual parts of the company. When used in calculating value added, therefore, the concept of value added is often left unquantified for individual parts. Even for the total company, value added analysis is often used in a more conceptual framework, as you will see if you look at the fashion industry case in Chapter 4. In addition to the concept of value added, we have the related concept of the value chain. The chain identifies how value is added in an organisation especially those elements associated with the main functional parts of the organisation, production and marketing, for example. The value chain is usually divided into the primary activities and the support activities. And you can see how this analysis can be applied in the fashion industry in Chapter 4. You will see that there are two or three areas of the value chain that have high value added for a fashion company. For example, crucial value-added elements usually include the famous designer of the fashion house and also the marketing and sales. The reason is that the fashion shows in Paris, Milan and New York are often linked with a famous individual designer and also benefit from the special media coverage that goes with marketing the fashion show itself. In analysing the value chain, it's also important to consider green strategy issues. Green strategy value seeks out ways of reducing energy, lowering carbon content 
and adopting recycling policies, not only within the organization, but also with suppliers and customers. In addition, the green strategy value chain will involve every element and function, including those that perhaps do not always feature highly in many value chain analyses that focus on competitive advantage. Of course, where there is high value added in an organization, there is also competitive advantage. In analyzing competitive advantage, one of the main concepts is the resource-based view, commonly abbreviated to the RBV. The resource-based view argues that the individual resources of an organization provide a stronger base for strategy development than industry analysis. The reason is that the resource-based view will identify those areas that are exceptional and deliver competitive advantage. There are usually seven elements that can be associated with the RBB. Number one, prior or acquired resources. Number two, innovative capability. Number three, being truly competitive. Number four, substitutability, a resource that cannot easily be substituted for another. Number five, appropriability, a resource that is uniquely possessed by the organization. Number six, durability, a resource that lasts over time. And number seven, imitability, a resource that cannot be easily imitated. It's not necessary for an organization to possess all of them to have competitive advantages. Each successful organization will have some unique combination of resources, some of which will deliver competitive advantage. Importantly, there is no general agreement on what constitutes the best single approach to the development of sustainable competitive advantage. Two general approaches have proved useful. Distinctive capability from John Kay, which includes three areas. Number one, architecture. Number two, reputation. And number three, innovative capability. And separately, core competencies from professors Hamill and Prahalad. Another final approach that is gaining ground is the special knowledge of the organization, which may be crucial to competitive advantage. And this is explored in Chapter 7.